we play Google, no? I guess they should take down Google, too. Or yeah, that maybe was that's the first that. thing everybody pointed out. Why aren't you taking down Google? <laughs> and they, uh, they're very cooperative with uh, the right people, I guess. <laughs> well, just a, another very quick piece of news. I know this probably won't... Uh, be of much appeal to either of you two, but uh, thanks to Fab from the Linux Outlaws, I actually got uh, hooked on Minecraft as well, and it's uh, something I've been playing quite a bit. But just uh, the very quick piece of news is that the the new beta is out, uh, version 1.6.6, with a host of uh, upgrades to the to the client and uh, to, to the engine. So uh, check it out if you haven't already bought the uh, Minecraft uh, package this game. Shame on you! It's absolutely fantastic. It's I, great. I fun. heard it's proprietary. Yes, and that makes me evil, but I love it. It's fantastic. I'll um, I'll swallow my uh, my morals for for a day or two to play a Minecraft because it's uh, hey, and it's, hey, it's, I, it's. I have Photoshop installed on my Linux box. You know. <laughs> it's. I mean, what's nice about Minecraft is it's a really nice story of a little guy making a lot of money out of a very decent product. And I think one of the things we've always said is that Linux users, whilst obviously a lot of their applications are open source and they're in an open source environment, Linux users are very happy to pay money for decent quality software. And for things like Minecraft, a game, the fact that it's um, proprietary it doesn't particularly de- uh, detract from the game at all. It doesn't detract from the game at all full stop and it's a very nice story of a, of a little guy who's uh, come up with an idea he's marketed it and uh, made a lot of money so fair play to him good on him and uh, I'll continue to enjoy his uh, product um, have you got any other news or anything else you want to bring up before I do my Jerry Springer-esque ending of the show well Red Hat has been upgraded just recently mm. one of the analysts thinks it's going to go up to fifty-seven dollars that's quite nice to hear. If it's true, uh, I don't really believe anything they say at face value. I think they have their own reasons for recommending certain things. And, uh, but uh, one of the uh, other things I've, I've heard about is uh, Firefox 6. Uh, I was going to mention this yesterday. Firefox 6 is being talked about now. And it's, it's kind of strange. I mean, I'm still with Firefox 3.6, and I'm just feeling very much behind because I haven't gotten Firefox 4. And, you know, Firefox 5 is in beta now, so it's just almost there, so I'm kind of thinking, well, why would I want I, to upgrade? I, I'm not, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, Firefox 5 makes sense to me, because um, something we don't talk about with Firefox 4 is they kind of screwed it up, and that Firefox 4 mobile and Firefox 4 desktop are really entirely different animals. They're, they're While they're using the same core, they don't behave the same, they don't behave write and play nice with each other it, it, you have to work hard you basically they're entirely separate versions based on what I've looked at with Firefox 5 they realized that might have been a mistake and maybe there should be one Firefox that just happens to be on different platforms <laughs> yeah and I think it's supposed to be separate and they've been working for years and they changed the name too it used to be Fennec and all kinds of stuff and I, I think they have some quite a bit of issues with competition from Opera and with other browser, so they're kind of like the new... Uh, is it version 1.0 or is it version 1. something now? Or I, I believe it's pretty new. Uh, one of the... Did you hear about the LibreOffice uh, 3.4 being released uh, at a very strategic time when, uh, as we probably ought to have mentioned this before, but the uh, the Open Office project and the copyrights and everything else has been passed to the Apache Foundation. Mm. Uh, which probably means it's going to have an Apache license, which then means that IBM will be able to make proprietary derivatives and not put anything back in. Uh, mostly Lotus uh, Symphony, so uh, what we might see is the open office thing going towards perhaps a more proprietary, uh, kind of proprietary with some of the core things being open source and uh, LibreOffice is under fire because of that. Uh, by IBM mostly. One of the concerns I had is IBM is very kind of happy with patents and uh, and they have cross licensing with Microsoft. So one of the things they could do is try to sell up though to Symphony is the only so called safe uh, version of Open Office, that the one that's not going to put you at risk of patent lawsuits or something. So that that's kind of worrying to me but personally. But uh, I I, I believe that I understand the worry, but the reality is most people who get Office download it directly. 
as far as I know, o- Open Office largely doesn't come bundled with things at this stage. Uh, and the same thing with Libra. So really, it's the job of all of us in the open source community to be educating all of those people that we spent the last few years, you know, basically going, oh, well, you, you should try open office. You know, we, it, we should start telling them all, it's like, by the way, you should really take a look at Libre. It's, it's what open office became. You know, we don't even have to explain the whole conflict or thing. We just have to yeah. say... The open office has become LibreOffice, and leave it at that. And like this, the open office is it's like it's Libre, and it's just tell them that, and they'll go follow Libre. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I mean, Linux Mint 11, and I, I only bring that one up because it's the version of Mint that I've spent any particular time with, um, and that's certainly a, a distribution aimed at the more average user as well as the seasoned professional, I'm sure. Um, but that but that comes bundled with LibreOffice. So uh, yeah, that, a, a few months ago, yeah. PC, a few months ago, when PC Win issued out a mass update, it it got rid of Git Open Office and moved to Git Libre, and basically Open Office is like no longer really in there. It's it they've switched to Libre, Ubuntu <laughs> switched to Libre. Everybody's switching. They're, yeah. they're not supporting Open. <laughs> and that, that that's what it'll take. I mean, it, it's going to be the distros which are popular with the uh, new migrating users, which will get the message out. I think. And uh, well, but it, I, I, there's a lot of pe- I, 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 there's a lot of people on Windows now that use Open Office. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe in the UK they did a survey in the register about um, three, four years ago, and it was 20 percent of people using it in, at work and at home. Twenty percent using Open Office, mm-hmm. maybe in tandem with Office, but they did actually have it installed. So, and and I think I've I've mentioned this before, but I I truly believe that uh, it's. And this is going to sound very bizarre until I explain it, but I truly believe that it's Firefox that introduces um, a lot of people to open source software and alternatives. A uh, site that many of the users that I've spoken with and ultimately installed Linux for have started off by uh, replacing Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer with Firefox, and that's been their first introduction to an alternative product to a, to a Microsoft product, which they even brought up with, and um, that is actually fantastic it works well it's very quick and they see this and they think well what else can i explore which is a replacement to microsoft products and leads on to other things and maybe even LibreOffice and ultimately uh, linux maybe and, well, and, uh, and i have noticed that the people who complain the least when they start switching over to linux are people whose browser was either firefox or chrome because i have yet to see a linux distro where Firefox is not the default browser, and in almost every single one, you can get Chromium just with a click. The only one I can think of... ...based one usually give you a... Yeah, well, the only one that strikes me instantly is uh, is, uh, Peppermint uh, Peppermint Ice, which uh, was a distro that I I covered uh, probably about a year ago and have been following since. Um, And that's the only one that springs immediately to mind that came to something other than, um, than Firefox. Uh, but yes, sorry, Ross, I interrupted you. Uh, uh, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Canonical was thinking several times about putting Chromium. Uh, actually, not, I'm not sure it was Chromium. I think they wanted to put proper Chrome in it, which is proprietary, or at least contains some blobs in it. Uh, back uh, around two years ago, they were looking at the, they had this kind of separate thing for netbooks. And I believe they first were trying to find something a bit lighter. So you're talking about back in the days of Firefox 2. Point something or almost Firefox 3. And uh, they were starting to try and find something lighter. So they thought about putting Chromium. And then they thought about putting it by default in the Ubuntu distribution, which I don't think they ever came very close to doing that. Uh, but the I mean, KDE distros, the KDE based distros, usually the ones I use, usually don't come with Firefox. Like, Use Fedora 14. The KDE version didn't come with Firefox, and I think that's the same thing at Kubuntu. They just try to encourage you to use the uh, KHTML or WebKit. I mean, I'm, I must admit, I haven't really relied on Firefox for for many years now, and I'm now entrenched with Chromium, which I think is fantastic. I, I, I should really check out Firefox to the current state and do a comparison, uh, a proper comparison between the two. But uh, well, I, I, I like some of the characteristics of Chromium, 
but it's it's, it's just lighter. It, it's I don't know how to describe it, how I why I like it so much, but it's just it feels lighter. There's less options thrown in front of you um, when you're looking at the screen. I like the, the way that it it tabs the um, different pages. Um, I can't okay. really explain why. Um, well, no, I say that, that's the thing. It's one of those things you either love it or hate it. The less options is actually one of the things about Chrome.